for a very long time now, probably about a year and a half, maybe a year, no, maybe a year and a half, no, maybe a year, I don't know, I can't remember. I have been hearing the rumblings that Marianne was going to run, and um, I just can't even with you guys, like, <laughs> I can't even. All right, let's cover the announcement. And I say to you now, again, hear me, it's our turn. Let's do this. Thank you very, very, very much. Marianne Williamson has now officially announced her run for president in a bid to challenge Joe Biden for the Democratic primary for 2024. And uh, so far, the mainstream press is not a fan. Now, I'm going to get to some of those headlines, which are all eerily similar. Well, it's not a matter of the mainstream press because we we ran through that with Bernie Sanders that we had a problem with getting media attention on his campaign. But these are not even close to and you're going to cover this. But um, Bernie Sanders is an experienced legislator. Uh, Marianne has never held a government position. She has in the past tried to primary Ted Lieu in his district and didn't even come close but i'll get into the the details of why this is i i do understand that she has been recently given some advice that might help her, the direction of her campaign um because she's been trying to hire staff for um a few weeks now and i know at least one person on my friends list got a job and I'm also going to get to uh, an appearance on one of those uh, mainstream shows. But first here, before I even play the first clip, her announcement clip, I just want to say that this discussion for me, this video for me, is more about, is this serious? Is this a serious run? Does she have a chance? Or is this, you know, just to sell books or for some other reason just to get her name out there? I'm going to get into uh, my thoughts on that. And, yeah, this is just... Well, I mean, that, that's why Trump was in it originally back in the 2016 cycle, is he was already in the last month right before the election making plans for a media uh, venture that would happen right after the election where he would have some sort of talk show. I think it was going to be like some sort of live streaming podcast type of thing. Um, he was already advertising that before election night. And he himself, if you look at the pictures of election night of Trump, he looks shocked that he won. He wasn't expecting to win. And I, I, I mean, I think it would be near impossible for Marianne to actually win the primary against Biden. But um, who knows? Maybe she actually took the advice to heart that was given to her and um, can figure out how to. Uh, the problem. Here's the problem. She's been surrounding herself with people who um, spend more time complaining about the Democratic Party than who complain against the GOP. They spend more negative energy complaining about the Democratic Party than the GOP. And so in doing so, that makes it impossible for her to get local clubs to back her up. Um, to get the, the feet on the ground because ultimately they're going to have to line up behind the nominee and it's unlikely that she'll get the nomination, right? So in California, for example, the only clubs she could potentially get are the Feel the Burden Temp clubs and potentially other progressive clubs, Democratic clubs, to help her along. She might be able to get like our revolution. Um from my experience, those particular clubs are the least effective organizers I have seen throughout the party. And all of them are anti-labor for the most part. They say that they're pro-labor, but they're always voting against labor when it comes to party positions. For me, less about her platform, which I'll link to her website below the video is a fantastic platform but it's less about that it's more about is there even a point to this but 
Let's get to her announcement video. This is what she put out on Twitter this weekend. I'm Mary M. Williamson, and when I was growing up, America had a vibrant middle class. The average American worker had decent benefits, could afford a home, could afford a car, could afford a yearly vacation, could afford for one member of the couple to stay home if they wished, and could afford to send their kids. How old is she? Do we know how old she is? Because if she was growing up in the 70s, that's not fucking true. <laughs> that's not true. The last time that um, families could truly afford to do that, like a lot of families, like the majority of America, would have been the 60s and early 70s. But once we hit hyperinflation and the oil crisis of the 70s, done. That's when you had to have two par parent worker households and um, and there was a lot of single parents who were struggling even further. But uh, I mean, like, how old is she? Do we know how old she is? To college. But over the last 50 years, there's been a massive transfer of wealth years. to the tune of $50 trillion from the bottom 90% of Americans to the top 1%, decimating America's middle class. We all owe President Biden a debt of gratitude for defeating President Trump in 2020. But with the things that they're going to be throwing at us in 2024, we need to submit to the American people an agenda of fundamental economic reform, universal health care, tuition-free college. Does anybody remember that um, when she dropped out in the 2020 cycle, because she was running back then, too, and she said some pretty spacey things on the debate stage, but she had like a moment where she came after Kamala that everybody was all excited about, um, which I can't even remember now. But I, I remember she also said some spacey things on, on, on the stage. Do we remember, does anybody remember when she dropped out, did she endorse anybody? Did she endorse Bernie? Or did she just drop out and leave it open-ended? I don't think she endorsed Biden, but I'm fairly certain she didn't endorse Bernie either. I think her, her venture then was selfish as well. She's very, in my mind, she's very much like a Tulsi Gabbard sort of candidate. Just at state colleges and universities, higher education, including tech schools, paternity and maternity leave, free childcare, and a guaranteed living wage. These are things that are considered moderate positions in every other advanced democracy. But in the United States, people have been trained to expect too little. The American people have been played. What the Democratic Party should do is to truly return to the principles of Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Not just alleviate people's suffering, but offer them genuine economic reform. Not just help people survive in an unjust system. The Democratic Party should end an unjust system. Washington, D.C., with a few brave exceptions, is filled with two major categories of leaders. Those who don't even care about all the suffering that's going on out there, and those who do not have the moral courage to fix it. Let me in there. I will. Oh, okay. I'm Marianne Williamson, and I approve this message. All right, so, so here's the thing. What, um, what I think um, a lot of the people who claim that they are progressive, the thing that they are lacking is that they spend more time talking about kitchen table economics than they do about human rights. And one of the big things that we have lost during the Trump presidency is a lot of human rights, especially women's reproductive rights, but also the attack against immigrants, um, the attack against black lives. Uh, there's There's been so, and uh, the Asian hate crimes, the anti-Semitism, these are things that progressives, some progressives in air quotes, don't really want to touch because a lot of them don't care, for one, because it doesn't apply to them specifically, so it doesn't affect their lives. But number, so I'm guessing she's probably gone through menopause. She doesn't care if it like, <laughs> doesn't matter for her anymore, right? Um, these things are specific to minority groups or spe or specific demographics right religious groups whatever um muslims too right the muslim ban that happened um so we've we've had all of these human rights violations and she doesn't want to fucking tackle that i just don't see that as very progressive 
I would have definitely like if if I had been in charge of her messaging, I would not have made it entirely about kitchen table economics. It would have been talking about how America is a melting pot and that uh, there have been too many injustices over the last presidency and we need to come back to some normalcy normalcy in America that's how I would have positioned it all right how about that I think that was a solid uh introduction know. to Marianne Williamson to her run clearly very inspired very inspired by Bernie Sanders and it appears at least to me that she has progressed in her views over the last several years as there is even a point during the 2020 primary where she was asked about universal health care and the eradication of private health insurance and she kind of flip-flopped on the idea of medicare for all based on that so hopefully now she's a little more clear hopefully did she say that i don't think she said that did she say that every american deserves health care i don't think she said that what do you think she said because uh, do, do you have like a web sh uh, like are you going to screenshot her website and and show us where she lands on Medicare for all? You going to show us that because yeah, she was like I said she's like a Tulsi Gabbard type of candidate. And she could flip parties at any fucking time in her positions and as I said her platforms on the website it is it's fantastic. I mean, I got okay, no issues with okay, the platform. Here we go. But this is not really important right now if there is not even a shot at all at anything <laughs> so right. look i'm gonna get to uh she's an appearance on in the press and everything and i'll get to that in in some amazing headlines but is this a serious run the jury i think is still out because i look has she been building this for a couple of years? Has it been in the, in the planning stages? Has she been trying to build a movement? Has she been been in contact with, uh, you know, you? The answer is yes, but she's contacting the wrong people, David. I've been getting phone calls about it for quite some time, but all of the phone calls I'm getting are from people who are not the most effective organizers in the state. And being the fifth largest economy in the the world, and the fact that Marianne lives in Los Angeles, just about an hour from me, because she ran in Ted Lieu's district, um, she's working with the wrong people. And I know for a fact that she has been advised to start working with better people. Because if she continues to surround herself with people who are constantly um, dem-exiting, and convincing other people to dem exit, she's not going to get the Democratic Party resources she needs. Even if she was to advance through the primary, the the party itself, the the people who comprise the party, who are grassroots in the Democratic clubs, are not going to be happy about that. And a lot of those people are so moderate that they might even consider voting Republican if she's the nominee. This would be a serious problem for us because she has said so many spacey things. I mean, there are lots of screen caps of her tweets where she just says all kinds of crazy shit. Has she, has she been in contact with other progressive groups in an attempt to try and, you know, start with this big push and have everyone behind her? I don't have the answer to that. It doesn't appear that she has. But maybe she has. Maybe she's tried to do that, and it hasn't worked out. So far, I haven't really seen that. So it's it's hard to know how how much meat there really is behind this. That said, even if, you know, regardless of the motivation, let's, I don't think this is the case, but let's just say for a second that Marion Williamson is only doing this to, to sell her books. The motivation behind what she is doing here doesn't matter as much as the potential impact of a run like this especially if the media covers it properly. So my point here being that Marion Williamson and her run here, her challenge to Joe Biden, if it's covered enough and isn't just forgotten about after this week, has the potential to move the conversation in a Democratic primary where Joe Biden, you know, isn't immediately just talking about um, 
you know, trying to reach out to the right wing, which is ridiculous. He should try to get out people that don't normally vote out to vote. And you do that with a proper economic message, as Marion Williamson did in that video. But with Williamson potentially challenging him from the left here, and again, if there's proper media coverage, it could then move Joe Biden to have to address many of those issues that are being addressed by Marion Williamson. So regardless of what you... By the way, it's not just the progressive groups. Has she reached out to black activists? Has she reached out to the black activists? Has she reached out to the Muslim activists? Has she reached out to the Asian activists? They all have groups. Had she reached out to labor or did she just write something on her website? Because I have a feeling she has not reached out to labor based on the, the people I know in labor. I don't think that she's reached out to labor at all. I'm just being real with you. Like, who is she reaching out to other than like the Bernie's coffee shop crowd? <laughs> think about Marianne, regardless of, of what you think her motivations are or anything. It's this is a net positive. There's no downside to her doing this. And the idea that, oh, it's going to hurt Joe Biden in the, in, in, you know, in the general election. It's, th this is, an, <laughs> this is a, a talking point that has been discredited again and again and again. The idea, for example, people say, oh, Bernie Sanders hurt Hillary Clinton in, in the general. You actually go and look at Bernie supporters, the vast, vast majority of them that voted for Bernie in the primary ended up voting for Hillary Clinton against Donald Trump. Yes. So those voters understand... That. Well, and on top of it, the ones who didn't were already libertarians or Republicans. They already were not that far to the left that they would have voted for the Democratic candidate unless it was Bernie. But Bernie had crossover appeal, and that's why they actually backed his campaign, kind of like Ross Perot did, right? Even if they don't get the person they want, they have to vote as a defensive mechanism against the creeping authoritarianism of the right wing. So I have no worries about this hurting Joe Biden in a general election. To me, that's all just a ridiculous talking point. But um, the most likely scenario here, I think, is that this could change the conversation. Again, if the media actually covers her, which is going to be, I think, the biggest issue. So they're covering her right now. At least there's headlines about it right now. But uh, I don't know if that's going to continue. The other barrier to Marianne really making any traction here is the fact that she is not in government. So you could say, oh, Marianne Williamson running just like, you know, Bernie Sanders was a, was a long shot candidate in 2016. Yeah, but Bernie was a senator. Right. Bernie had been in Congress since the early 90s. So I don't think that's a proper comparison. And then you may say, oh, but Donald Trump wasn't a politician at all. And he became president. Yeah, but we're talking about the right wing. So I think, you know, their motivations for voting are a little different generally than Democratic voters, especially primary voters. So you're talking about people in primary voters who you know, generally want somebody who, who they are being told is electable. Mm -hmm. So I think the Democratic voter base, especially in, when it comes to the primary, is a lot more susceptible to mainstream media narratives. And that's going to hurt Marion Williamson, as oh, yeah. I'm going to show you here with some of these headlines. Well, it's, it's she's going to get clobbered because um, even if she had, you know, first of all, she ran in 2020 and she got no traction, right? And they're going to be able to pull back the debates. They're going to be able to clip some of the stuff that she said in these debates. They're going to be able to pull up these crazy tweets that she put out. Um, but also, if she was so unsuccessful in that presidential run, then the year when we have to prevent fascists from overtaking government again no i i just don't see it as realistic that any rational person would um risk giving government back to the republicans at this point i, I just don't see it as possible and for as much as people complain about biden um he has been reaching out to progressives he has incorporated some of their ideas into the platform and um he certainly has done a better job of cleaning up trump's mess than when trump was putting his mess together which are all again very uh, eerily similar but let me get to quickly this is just a quick clip from uh, her appearance on abc this week uh about why she wants to run for president i think i'll just i'll just sit here as i play it 
Why do you want to be president? I want to be president because this country needs to make an economic U-turn. And the system that effectuates and perpetuates that kind of income and opportunity inequality is not changing itself. It tweaks itself every once in a while. There is some incremental change. But the devastation, the ubiquitous economic despair and human devastation that is produced by this sociopathic economic system is not changing. And it's not going to change if we continue to elect the same old Senate. Why do you want... I think she is a fantastic order. Uh, she delivers her point there perfectly. And her... Her uh, analysis of of what the problem is is completely accurate. So I love you know no issue at all with what with the the point that she is making with her platform. I think all of that is perfect. It's just a matter of are people going to actually take her seriously when she is not in government? Again, as Democratic primary voters, historically they don't take someone like this seriously. That could change, but uh, you know so far we haven't seen any evidence of that. Now let me get to showing you. I got, I got some headlines here. These are uh, hilarious okay. in in how they frame this announcement. CNN politics. Marianne Williamson formally launches likely long shot Democratic primary challenge to Biden. Now you can say, well, David, this is you know this is accurate. Even you're saying he has she has a a very you know low chance at at beating Biden here. But when you are announcing news, you don't insert your own ideas about you know what that means this is just marianne williamson is launching her run as a democratic primary challenge against joe biden that's the news but you're going to see a a theme here a pattern here nbc news marianne williamson announces another long shot presidential bid uh the guardian marianne williamson officially launches long shot 2024 presidential campaign the Hill, Marianne Williamson, officially launches long shot bid for 2024. Again, this is supposed to be news, not, you know, an op-ed, not opinions, but they're all inserting their opinion here. And the AP, which is really supposed to be, I mean, they're really supposed to be about just the facts, just the news. Marianne Williamson begins long shot 2024 challenge to, uh, to Biden. Now, I got to give you credit here to Axios and the New York Times. Axios here with the headline, Marianne Williamson announces 2024 presidential bid. This is how you do actual uh, reporting, actual journalism. And the New York Times here, Marianne Williamson wants a debate. Kicking off her second presidential campaign, the self-help author called President Biden a weak choice and said Democrats shouldn't fear a primary. Good. Good stuff. So if you want a little more, you know, she has a, a about a 30-minute speech here. Um... It's it's a good speech, but you know, largely what she said was summarized in her announcement video that she that she that I just showed you. So there's no point showing you, you know, uh, the speech in my opinion. But it's a good speech. Again, reiterates a lot of the same points. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> so look, I'm in terms of a primary. Look, if I had the option, if she's actually going to be on the ballot in the primary in every state, and you have the option, Biden or Marion Williamson, and you know there may be more, more that that jump in the race. But so far, Marianne or 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 Joe, uh, it's clear that uh, at least I would vote for Marion Williamson. Not even close in a primary. There, there's no, no, no. I can lobby Biden. Marianne is off her rocker, and there's too much evidence of that. There's going to be debate footage. There's going to be tweets. And um, we look stupid as fuck if we back stupid candidates. If we back crazy ass candidates, we're going to look stupid as fuck. So, no. I am happy to organize for Bernie. I'm not going to organize for new age candidates. Not going to do it no like why wouldn't you so i hope <laughs> there's enough people like me out there um i tend to think not and then look we can have a larger discussion about how she would do it in a in a where does she stand on vaccines do we know this do we know where she stands on vaccines and masks and stuff like that do, do we know where she lands on that because i i, I saw an interview on fox news where she brushed away identity politics 
if, if she does not consider the individual needs of demographic groups, she's not a true progressive. She lands in the same territory as Tulsi Gabbard. So the answer for me is no. I, I mean, you might be like, okay, well, she seems like she supports the same things as me. She didn't support Medicare for All in the 2020 cycle, but I bet you this time around she'll do it, right? Right? No, I'm out. No way. Federal election, but I don't think those conversations are really even worth having until we get closer to seeing how Marianne is actually performing against Joe Biden in polling and if there is an actual shot here. We'll see. But uh, I don't know. I hope more people jump in. It's worth having that conversation, worth having that challenge, and it's worth pushing, attempting here to push Joe Biden in a more, uh, you know, economically conscious, more progressive direction that actually speaks to the needs of working class individuals. Yeah, but she doesn't represent the working class individuals, David. She doesn't. She's a privileged white woman who sells self-help books and talks about her new age bullshit and wants to buy a thousand dollars worth of orbs per month. No. Can we stop lifting up candidates who make us look crazy, please? Can we stop?